Um, good morning. Um, one of the key issues um, in, bon in Durban um, is actually the Green Climate Fund. And um, as many of you know, um, the Transitional Committee, which was tasked to design the Green Climate Fund, did present a report to the Conference of Parties, but that um, report was not adopted by consensus. So when parties came to Durban, um, it, was a, it was really a concern on everybody's mind whether the GCF was indeed uh, going to be a positive outcome in Durban. Um, from what we understand the, happening in the uh, negotiations, um, parties are close to an agreement in relation to uh, the Green Climate Fund. But one very important um, sticky problem or major issue and which is critical for developing countries is the issue of who will be the interim um, secretariat for the Green Climate Fund. If you recall in Cancun, it was agreed that the GCF would be supported by an independent secretariat. And in the um, negotiations at the moment, what we understand is that there are three options which are on the table for consideration as to who should be the interim secretariat. One is the United Nations Framework Convention Secretariat, the UNFCC Secretariat. The other is the GEF, the Global Environment Facility Secretariat, which many of you know is linked to the World Bank. And the third is the um, UN office in Geneva. And from what we understand, the developing countries, the G77 and China as a whole, have rejected the option of the GEF. And what we also understand is that this is, uh, the GEF is an option that is favored by uh, the developed countries, particularly the United States. So this is still uh, a wrangle that is happening and it's expected to proceed uh, today and we don't know what's happening in the rooms at the moment. Many of you also know about the ministerial Indaba. The Indaba is a dialogue process where the COP presidency has had informal consultations on what they call the big picture. What the big picture actually is about is whether there should be a new um, treaty that would replace the Kyoto Protocol. Um, and there are many um, uh, options on the table in terms of how that process will unfold. And when there is a lot of confusion also as to what is a legally binding instrument. As you know, many of the, like the AOSIS, the Alliance of Small Island States and the LDCs do talk about a legally binding instrument. But when you interrogate the details of that, it's very different from what the European Union is thinking and it's completely different from what the United States is envisioning. Um, so what you see here uh, are options that we, which we have circulated. I won't go into all the details of the options because we don't have time. But if there are questions, we're very happy to deal with that. And I'm sure Martin will deal with more. But basically, the concern here is whether the process itself um, will respect the Bali um, roadmap, as it is called, the Bali outcomes. And um, this is really what developing countries have been calling for in terms of the two-track outcome. And the concern is whether the two tracks will be merged into one single track and therefore um, a complete renegotiation of the rules of the convention um, totally and a replacement of the Kyoto Protocol. Um, meanwhile, we've, as you know, some of the um, informal groups under the ad hoc working group on long-term cooperation, there are many elements of the Bali Action Plan. This long-term cooperative action group is supposed to advance the work from Bali. Um, some progress was made in Cancun, and many of the sticky issues um, are still remaining on the table, and, um, and uh, some of these issues have been kicked up to the ministerial level for consultations and political guidance, but what we understand from many of our, at least the people we speak to, is that some of these consultations have been going on in bilaterals, especially on the mitigation and the shared vision, and we are not sure um, how that process is unfolding in terms of text. We are yet to see any um, uh, decisions come out of that process. Um, and many were complaining to us uh, that they don't know what's going on. 
at least um, in the informal groups that were open to observers on the technology transfer yesterday, a key issue for developing countries was intellectual property rights. This was advanced by Bolivia. It was supported by the Philippines, but firmly resisted by United States, Japan, um, and Canada, and so on. And the other issue was technology assessment. Philippines actually called for technology assessment, especially in relation to new um, emerging technologies, and this was also opposed. So what we're very concerned about is many of the key issues that are very central to the developing countries are not being addressed adequately and are being still resisted. So we have yet to see how this will unfold. Thank you.